dare great things for Christ. Christ calls us to dare great things. In the marketplace, as well as in the mission field, there has never been a time like the present for the spirit of the Catholic entrepreneur. Now is the time for men and women of great courage and great vision to engage our church and our culture. Now is the time to dare great things. And here is your host as we dare great things, Father Nathan Cromley, the president and founder of the St. John Institute. St. Thomas Aquinas is a genius of thought, and in this course for Catholic leaders, I present a summary course on the four aspects of all human actions essential to leadership. In today's class, I focus in on the doing of deeds. All leadership goes from vision into planning and from planning into execution. Doing the great things we plan is the key to having impact in our life. Thanks everybody for coming. I am just honored to serve you as leaders and to to be able to bring you this intense light coming from the gospel about leadership. And I know so many people think, you know, I'm not a leader, Father, this doesn't apply to me. I'd say, no, every Christian is called to be a leader. When I say leader, I don't mean organizational leader only. Although I do mean that, I don't mean only those who are involved in politics or involved in running different things in their world. No, no. I I mean anyone who realizes that their life is called to impact the lives of others, right? That's called evangelization. That's called charity, my friends. It's called bringing the, the grace of God into our world as moms, as grandmothers, as grandpas, as salesmen, as all kinds of things. Whatever we do, Doing it in the name of God makes us people who do it to influence. And I want to help you to do that better. I'm convinced that it's not a matter of methodology. It's not a technique that I'm trying to teach you how to do. No. The way that God influences our world and changes it is through the power of personal radiance. In other words, who you are influences this world in the name of God more powerfully than anything else. The actions that flow from who you are, when you can align those two, my goodness, I'm not asking you in other words to adopt some technique or follow six rules for this or 15 steps for that. No, no, no. But I am asking you to become authentic. It was Pope Paul VI who said so beautifully, our world today will more readily listen to witnesses than it will to teachers. That the thing that young people especially crave is authenticity from those who are speaking. Well, how do I become authentic? (laughs) It's a whole journey, I know. But that journey is exactly the journey into leadership. Because the moment you become authentic is the moment you become a leader. And so I want you just to, to link that and to stop thinking of leadership as some sort of technique that business people do in order to be successful. The reason why they're successful as business leaders is because they actually are leaders in everything that they do. Otherwise, you might be successful in business. Yeah, but you might fail in life. And that's not what we're about. We want to be successful in life. And that's why I was successful in my business leadership, right? So how do we put those order correctly? It's by focusing ourselves on where true leadership lies in my actions, and in how I act best in order to make the impact that I know my heart yearns to make in this world. So to do that, let's beg for God's grace. Why don't we bow our heads and say a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, O Holy Spirit, Father of the poor, illumine the hearts of your faithful, and enkindle in us the fire of your love. Lord, we ask you to set our hearts on fire to make us your instruments and to help us to stay out of the way of your powerful action. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. John, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
All right, so if you remember where we're picking up here, in the first couple of classes, we, we talked about how all leadership flows from action. All action flows from having desires, having a vision, in other words, a goal that we're going towards, something that is drawing our hearts forward, right? And then taking the time to plan that out. How can we best execute? And the planning we've mentioned, it starts with looking at the world around you, looking at the resources you have, and measuring that in the world around you against the action you want to achieve. Okay? But today I want us to focus in on another question, which is the third stage in any type of leadership, which is actually executing against what you plan. This is a very fascinating field because it measures the, the success of the whole endeavor. You cannot have a successful impact unless you have an impact. <laughs> okay? It's really kind of simple. A lot of times we think, oh no, great leaders are the ones who have great ideas. I'm like, no, great idea makers are those who have great ideas. But that doesn't mean that they're a leader. As that other people say, no, no, great leaders are the great strategists, you know? Yeah, and, and if I was a great strategist, then, you know, I, I could, I'd be able to tell everybody else what to do. I'm like, well, that's great. That means you're a great strategist, but you're not necessarily a great leader. A great leader is someone who takes the great ideas and the great strategy and actually does something with them. I cannot claim to be a person who wins the world for Christ if I don't win the world for Christ? <laughs> There's like a drawing line between the great ideas that we have and the great plans of how we're going to execute them and whether or not those great ideas are ever brought to bear. And that drawing line is in the doing of the deed. This is where... Obviously, there's so much to, that, that can hold us back. There are so many things that can get in our way. But it's the one who does the deed, the man in the arena, who actually, you know, in the end, is the one who's the leader. I'm just going to read for you this awesome quote by Theodore Roosevelt that speaks to that. He says, It is not the critic that counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who's actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming. But he who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. Aren't those great words? That's The Man of the Arena by Theodore Roosevelt. It's part of a speech that he gave. And I think they're very inspiring words, right? Because they, they show us that, hey, in the end, everybody, this is not a game. Your life is not a game, right? <laughs> your family is not a game. We want your family to shine. We want your kids to love themselves. Right? We want your, fa your world to be awesome. We want our society to be peaceful. Well, then we're going to have to do something about it. Sitting back and acting like this world will govern itself or that good things will happen just by falling out of the sky, this is not Christian. God, who made all things without us, will not redeem all things without us. Right? God, who made everything and set this world in motion, has asked us, to play a consequential role in determining the fate of this world. When he made Adam and Eve in the garden, he put them there and then he said, till the garden and subdue it. Right? Make this garden better. Complete my act of creation by your work. 
and then fill this world with children. Like, but it's up to you. Then he left them with their freedom. And he's left with you with your freedom. What are you going to do with your freedom? Are you going to let it sit there? Or will you dare something great for Christ? Father Nathan is producing an ongoing source of videos to form, unite, and inspire you and your family. Go to eagleeyeministries.org. That's E-A-G-L-E-E-Y-E ministries.org. And subscribe to Eagle Eye Pro. Subscribe today. The other day I was talking with a friend and, and he said, you know, there's three types of people in the world. And I, I love it when people say this kind of thing. I found that, you know, it's really amazing that, that when you start working with people of business, they, they love these little kind of adages. They love wise sayings and little secrets to the world. You know, I, I think it's neat. It's like a, a way that you can see the, the quest for truth in the hearts of all people including those who are in business. So, and this guy, so he says, you know, there's three types of people in the world. There are three kinds of leaders. There's the general who has the vision and sees and commands the whole field. You have a commander whose job it is to then take the vision of the general and then map out a plan to victory, kind of a strategist, a strategic thinker. And then you have the actual soldiers who execute against that plan in the field, knowing what's going on on the ground, the trees, the obstacles, the marshes, as they make their way through it. Kind of the tacticians, right? You have the visionary, the strategist, and the tactician. And all three of them shine in their leadership. And I think that that's a, 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 an important point. It's not that the, the general is the leader. No, all three are necessary. Sometimes generals actually could fail because they don't know what's actually there on the ground. The general needs to be informed of how you're moving, how quickly you're moving, what the terrain is all about, what the condition of the soldiers are, what the morale is. And that comes from people who are actually know the, the local terrain and how to make things happen. I was told that Donald Trump, when you read his Art of the Deal, he talks about this and you could see this as he was... Uh, uh, acting as president, that when he would want to buy a, a piece of property, he said, I always talk to the taxi drivers and the restaurant owners and the people that are walking by on the street about what kind of neighborhood it is. You learn more by talking to people who are actually in the field than you do from, you know, websites or from magazines or from people trying to sell you something. And that's because in all three of those, you have an exercise of the intelligence that's essential. The visionary needs to know the big picture and the big goal and have the ability to connect his heart to something that doesn't even exist yet. I mean, that's really something. And the strategist has to take into calculation a knowledge of the resources, a knowledge of the end goal, and a knowledge of the circumstances around to map the best path forward. And then, you know, your tactician needs to know it, exactly how things work in the vicissitudes of life and how to navigate those vicissitudes to pull off what they're trying to accomplish. It's, it's a neat little, little way of looking at things. And of course, it's very simplistic. But the point of this is that no great plan ever has an impact unless it's implemented. There is a passageway between the inner life of a person, their heart, their intentions, right? Like how I want to be and where that person actually ends up in terms of the quality of who they are and the depths of their character and their moral fiber. And that passageway from the inner to the actual is the doorway of action. It's a person is judged based upon what they do, not just what they intend. I tell this to young people all the time because when they're looking for their spouses, right? They, you know, it's like, oh, well, Jimmy has such a good heart. I just love Jimmy's heart, you know? <laughs> 
he really intends to do all kinds of great things, you know. You're like, does Jimmy have a job? And she, well, no, but he's so nice. You know, you're like, ah, <laughs> Jimmy, get a job, you know. And Jimmy's like, well, I, I want to get a job, but I just can't decide where, you know. And you're like, well, that's fine, Jimmy, I guess, like when you're 14. But when you're 28, you need to start to, like, figure out how you're going to implement things in your life. I mean, otherwise, don't go dating people and promising them that you're going to be a great provider and a great husband when you can't hold down a job or even decide what job you're going to take. There's, there's different measurements, in other words, to, to goodness. There's the measurement of good intentions, and that's a fine thing, and that's the beginning of things. And we need to always remember that. It's a wonderful thing to set your heart right and to want to do what's good and want to do what's right. That's the, the first goal of education is the education of what is good and what is bad, what is right and what is wrong, what we should desire and what we shouldn't desire. So congratulations. If you've gotten that far, you've made a good first step in life. But there's another step that we have to take in order to really achieve excellence as a person. And that's the step of implementing those good intentions. And I'll say this right to all of you right now because I know it's a struggle to go to Mass every Sunday. It's a struggle, especially when other things come up that we really want to do, like deer hunting. <laughs> I love this example because it happens to me all the time. People say, Father, that I couldn't go to Mass because it was deer season, you know? And so I prayed to God in my deer stand. Or you meet people that are like this. They say, I don't go to Mass, Father, but I talk to God all the time. You know, and I'm just like, well, that, I'm glad you talk to God all the time. But going to Mass is different from talking to God. <laughs> There's a special thing that going to Mass entails. It's called offering the sacrifice of, of Jesus Christ on the cross in union with the priest. Okay, that action is commanded by the church that every Christian needs to do once a week. It, period. It's not a matter of whether you like it or not. So like, I know you can talk to God, but it's a different action. Why can't you give up an hour and a half of your time, drive to church, and attend Mass? See, like, what, what's going on? The church has made a, a line in the sand and said, Christians, in order to be practicing, need to go to church every Sunday. On Sunday, to worship God, that's what we're doing. You, and Christians don't get married on beaches. You know, Catholics don't get married on beaches. Catholics tithe. Catholics, and the, we make these like things that say like, these are definitive, you know, behaviors. You may not do these things and consider yourself to be a follower of Christ in good standing, you know, consider yourself to be struggling with that. But like at the same time, like, whoa, and, and why is that? It's because the glory of a human being isn't in their intentions. The glory of a human being is in our actions. My actions are where I incarnate, embody, make real my intentions. And so I'm not putting anyone down or saying anything discouraging to people who struggle to live up to their, the noble aspirations of Christianity. I struggle too, okay? But that's just it. I struggle and I want you to struggle to actually do it. The worst thing we could do is just move the goalposts and say, our actions don't even matter, right? Because if you, that's the worst thing, because as soon as you do that, well then nothing in your life really matters and you're gonna stop making an impact. You're gonna end up following instead of leading because leadership is not a sum of the good intentions that's in our hearts. Leadership is a sum of the good intentions in our hearts that we embody in such a way that they influence and impact the lives of those who are around us for the good. And now we lead for the good because we've chosen to lead, period. And we cannot lead without action. We cannot achieve excellence without excellent actions. And so let's struggle every day to get to that wonderful goal of being the person that we know we want to be. Father Nathan has founded the St. John Institute, the MBA program that develops students into the leaders of tomorrow by giving them a missionary's heart and an entrepreneur's mind. 
visit our website at stjohninstitute.org. Dare great things for Christ. So how do I actually then move forward in leadership in action? And when we look at it, there's two moments and they're separate moments, but there's two moments that define all doing of deeds. If I'm going to move from a desire through a plan into implementing that desire, I have to do one of two things first, and it's called in Latin, the word is imperium. So you can write that down, I-M-P-E-R-I-U-M. It's at the root of the word imperial, right? Because imperium means command. And there's a command that my mind gives down to my will to says, that says, do this. So obviously, Nike had a great way of, of, of epitomizing that. It's a famous slogan, just do it. And the reason why that's so effective is because it's rooted, well, in the laws of the human heart. That I, ha- I get to a spot where I can plan it all out and I can have all the intentions in the world and then I actually have to do it. <laughs> and a lot of us really struggle there. Right, because we, and this is the make it or break it moment and why so many of us struggle to do action. It's because I have to overcome that infinite length, which is measured by one inch. When I think about Imperium, I think about the inches that have defined my life. I remember when I left my, my home in order to give my life to Christ, consecrate my life to Christ as a religious brother, I was standing at the train tracks in Toledo, Ohio, and the Amtrak train pulled in at 1234 in the afternoon on August 20th. And I remember looking down at that train, and it was one inch away from the concrete platform upon which I was standing. Between the door, that would change my entire life, and my whole life as I was standing now, currently, at that, at that juncture, there was a one-inch space. If I crossed that one inch, I would never be the same. If I stayed where I was, the rest of my life would hurl down the tracks without me on it. It was an amazing existential moment, and I crossed that inch. And I'm here today talking to you because I walked one inch then. The distance between tomorrow and today is not infinite. It's actually extremely small. It's the choices that we make every moment as we live that make the tomorrow that we're living for. Tomorrow is not an accident. It's shaped by today. And today is the accumulation of one inch steps, small decisions. I think that that can help a lot of us, especially if we hung up on how do I overcome that, that gap between the action I know I need to do and my current motivation to do it. And I'd like to encourage you, first of all, by saying, remember that the, the choice to not act is a choice, meaning you're always going to be acting. So instead of getting in your mind, I've got this huge mountain I've got to climb. Oh my goodness, I'm overwhelmed. Stop for a second. And instead of thinking of it that way, say, well, I'm going to be doing something. I'm either going to be watching TV or I'm going to be accomplishing this great deed I need to be doing. Well, then it's easy because it's not like, okay, I'm waiting to do what I need to do. It's actually that, no, I'm always doing something and I want to do the best. So I, I, I will not allow myself just to sit here and watch TV when, in fact, I could be doing something else because I recognize that not choosing is a choice and I cannot afford to not choose this good thing in front of me. I have to choose to love my family, talk to my wife, play with my kids because it's who I am. And once I make that choice, I pass into the second phase of action, of doing the deed, which is the, the execution of the plan. Now, here I have an analogy for you that I think is a beautiful one. It, it, when, you're, when you're doing a deed, when you're actually out making something happen, you're like a goose in flight. 
No, I know. It's kind of silly because geese are not usually animals we hold in high esteem. But I think we ought to. Because if you look at the average weight of a Canadian goose, for example, does anyone know what an average weight of a Canadian goose is? 14 pounds. 14 pounds, they fly up to uh, 9,000 feet in the air, usually between 2,000 and 8,000 feet. And their speed is between 40 and 70 miles an hour through the air. They'll migrate 2,000, 3,000 miles. They'll, they'll cover hundreds of miles, sometimes 1,000 miles in a single day. An adult Canadian goose will live up to 30 years, but they begin flying within the first three months. And that, that image of a goose hurtling through space at 40 miles an hour, 15 pounds, you know, make its wings outstretched. We've all seen it overhead. Well, that's exactly what the do over deed is. When you act on a desire that you have, you cut ties with security. You don't know what's going to happen next. But if you hang on to the steering wheel, so to speak, and you keep your eyes focused on where you got to go and use your mind, well, then you will find your way through the, the changes and the concrete circumstances and the obstacles that come your way. But drive that ability to move through no matter what is the essence of what it means to effectively lead. By engaging my talents and my strength, I embody the noble things I want to see. I become the change that I desire. My actions effectuate and make present the goals and the power and the beauty of the vision that's in my heart. Great leaders dare great things. Dare great things for Christ. Share your feedback with Father Nathan. Send us an email at info at stjohninstitute.org. That's info at stjohninstitute.org. And don't forget to subscribe to premium video content to form, unite, and inspire you at Eagle Eye Pro on our website, eagleeyeministries.org. That's eagleeyeministries.org.